artists have to realize that <clears throat> they're they're in the driver's seat and they're and they're really the engine. Like I'm only gonna work as hard as you. You know what I mean? If you working hard, it's gonna make me get my shit together to work harder for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so that's why that's why drive is so important. One of the biggest obstacles artists face in the music game is access. Getting access to the people that can make it happen or access to the information and resources you need to get to the next level. That's the key. That's why you need two of the biggest in the game on your side. Introducing J.R. McKee. Boom, man. Welcome to the real industrial plug. You heard me? Okay, let me ask you a quick question because somebody asked a really good question in the comments on live. They asked, should a should an artist pay to be heard by A and R? In what capacity? I mean, I've seen a lot of A and R's, you know, charge for their services. You know what I mean, I think it's two the it's twofold on that, right? Um, if A and R wants to offer consulting services and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I think if you're gonna do that, you need to spell out exactly what the expectations are. And what you getting out of it, like, because if you asking somebody to take their time out their day to listen to your records, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Maybe whatever they ask you for, if you think it, it makes sense for you and it's worth it. But yeah. at the end of the day, all you're paying for is creative input and critique, right? right. So you got to really value their input. You got to really believe that they can give you some magical whisper words from God that's going to actually help you in your track. You right. Know? <clears throat> so if they if, if you believe that, cool. Or if, if you feel like they can help you, give you some insight or some game, cool. Yeah. But like it just, you know, paying them to be in front of them or something like that. Like, right. I you know. I so so I, I put my two cents in as well. Like, uh, again, it is exactly what you said. You, you're paying somebody to give you creative advice. And I pay creatives all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they don't got to have a title a and R. I'm always paying creatives yeah. because I want to know their creative input. If there's if there's ever an exchange of information from an expert in that space. You know what I'm saying? At, the, at at that point, that's that's just an exchange. It's a, it's a barter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And so, so somebody said, "What are the key traits you look you look to you like to see in an artist that you work with?" That's a good question. The drive, key. drive is the first one. Mm. Like I like it. Like I I like when the artist wants it more than me, or yeah. just as much. But they're willing to work because everybody say they want it, right? But what you doing to get it? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so. If you're driven and I actually see you making moves on your own and, you know what I'm saying, you actually putting one foot in front of the other to try to gain traction on your own, you're not waiting on nobody, you're not, you know, seeking approval or permission, you're just dropping records and shit like that. Right. I think that that's always dope because, you know, when if you're moving, it's, that shit motivate me. Damn, I need to catch up to my act. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Yeah, drive. It's like, I think that artists have to realize that, <clears throat> they're they're in the driver's seat and they're and they're really the engine. Like I'm only gonna work as hard as you. You know what I mean? If you working hard, it's gonna make me get my shit together to work harder for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so that's why that's why drive is so important. Yeah. So what, what what's a what's the give give us three traits. Give us three traits. Uh so we said drive is one. Mm -hmm. Um flexibility. Right? Mm -hmm. because, what you mean by that? Um understanding that things ain't always gonna go your way. It's going to be compromised. It's going to be times where you're going to have to um, settle for less, right? Yeah. Every situation ain't going to be ideal, but being flexible in a mind state and, you know, open to that, you know? Right. Um, and then the lastly and probably the most important, ego. 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 Now, nah, nah, talk to us about ego. And ego will kill you, bro. Yeah. Um, from an artist level, from an executive level, like, you know, when you talked about earlier, like, the being frustrated and you know letting people that might have you know bitch your back out like you know what I'm saying yeah. like, when you want to get that that's all ego talking bro mm -hmm. that, that shit is all ego like ego will be the ego it'll let you have a silent death because you'll choke on it you know what I'm saying like the sense of expectation for how people should treat you how you want to yeah. be a, uh, how you want to be acknowledged and stuff like that that's all fucking ego talking because at the right. end of the day if you're doing the work the universe gonna sort the rest out yeah. So as an artist, you know what I'm saying, if you got somebody that's humble enough to say, I need your help or uh, willing to get on the ground floor with you and just chop it up and say, okay, how can we move from point A to point B? Like, you know, that shows 
a willingness to like fucking actually collaborate that shows you right. know no ego you know what i'm saying but ego will be the the death of everybody right and then another thing that i want to add to that too is because a lot of times artists get in front of executives like us and they want to show you know i don't want to say how important they are but they just want to show like i'm a star mm-hmm. you know what i mean and so sometimes that that can come across as like as ego because I, I i deal with artists who feel like i have to act like, q money for example the artists we work with together feel like i have to act this way because this is how our artist is supposed to act and so i, I want to make sure people understand there's a difference between confidence and ego you know what i mean like don't get don't don't ever not be confident but don't never let that cross into you behave in the wrong way um as a, like the way of ego like oh no you can't tell me nothing because I'm the artist and I'm supposed to do this. Confidence and ego is two different things. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how to how to explain it even better than that. But just make sure y'all are able to tell the difference between being confident in your, in your work. I guess it's going back to what you said, flexibility. You can be confident, but be flexible. You know what I mean? And so, but getting into that, I want to talk about this for a second. Because me and Norve actually did have the pleasure of working together with through TIG. Mm-hmm. We worked on Q my Money. Brother, my brother did Yeah, we worked on Q Money. We worked on um, YFN and Lucci. And so, <clears throat> and so, let's go back to Q. Q was, uh, so if y'all don't know who Q Money is, he got that record neat. Uh, which And also, which speaks to TikTok. You know, he got that big ass trend on TikTok right now mm-hmm. for, the, for the record. Um, what is it called? Better Than Me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's sitting over about like 1.6 million creates on that shit. Like, yeah. it's, it's insane. Um, and obviously, that record came out in 2017. Yeah. And here we are five years later, and it's one of the biggest trends on TikTok. But what, what, what made you, and by the way, I, I just want to throw out one more thing. I remember we, we met Norve at church. We're, yeah, we're, yeah we, we're at church. We were at the one church in LA because I always go, hey, man, I'm, I'm a very faithful brother. I'm always at church. And so I took Q Money to church one Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And, and we ran into Norvay at church. And Norvay was like, yo, we got to get this deal. And I want it. You know what I mean? It was early on, too. That was early. Yeah, it was early on. So yeah. so kudos to my brother. Like, he really do got the ear. He really know what he's talking about. But what what did, what did attracted you to Q Money? Man, Q is a fucking star. Yeah. He is a fucking star. Hands down, like, Q is. The charisma, the personality, charming. Like, you're not going to talk to Q and not smile. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and exactly. then, for, you know, he, he walked in the room and his his personality was just magnanimous. It was, yeah. you know. Sad magnanimous. You don't really got to, <laughs> you ain't really got to say much for Q. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, he had his son, Nas, with him all the time. Right. Nas was a stepper. You know what I'm saying? Nas was dancing and shit. Like, yeah. So, what's what's the star personality? Like, what does that look like? I, 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 cannot, I cannot put that into words for you, my brother. Yeah. Because if I could, I'd be a lot further. I, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'd just be looking for. I just have a collection of stars. I can't. I can't put that in the words because it's, it's it's specific and unique. Yeah. To every single act, like you know, to what? First of all, it ain't a lot of stars nowadays, right? It's very far and few in between. Social media didn't help that because I remember when you know I was growing up and I was really big on like um I was a, a huge huge still am a uh, big fan of Puff growing yeah. up because he embodied you know a space where I wanted to be just like that an executive who you know was a creative but also made his own little enterprise and stuff like that and I remember thinking to myself like simple shit like damn I wonder what I wonder what his favorite restaurant is <laughs> like I wonder on. what I wonder what he really driving I see the cars in the video but what are you really driving right now with social media you know what your favorite artist eat for breakfast you know their favorite cereal you seeing with boogers in their eyes and shit like that, it's too much access. Right. So it kind of deflates how special they are to you. Right. That, in addition to, it just ain't a bunch of stars out nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, people who you walk in the room and you you just feel, you feel like, that. you you see people trying to get next to them just to say they was in the same space. Yeah. You know, for me personally, mo- the majority of acts nowadays, they regular. Mm. I, so... <laughs> Oh, you just threw you threw that one out there. I was what I was gonna say before you just threw that out there that most of y'all artists is regular. Is what I what I think, man. It's it's literally like an aura that they have around them. Like you walk into the room with somebody and you feel their aura. That's a star personality. You know what I mean? And I think it's deeper than than music itself. It's just an energy that they carry. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just an energy that they carry. 
But we got to go back into that little hot take right there. <laughs> what do you mean most of these artists is regular? Because oh, they man. don't want to hear that. I, I mean, I think it's just it's a lot of monkey see, monkey do now. Mm-hmm. Like getting a big-ass Cuban and, you know, a buzz down ain't going to make me feel like you a star. You the chosen one. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I just think it, it's a lack of innovation. Uh, right now, from a creative lens, uh, yeah, a lot of the records you could just insert artists and they all sound the same. Sound the same. <clears throat> so basically, the the it's too trendy. You know, what I mean, everybody following each other wave, and that's why when you get those artists that that sound totally different, they stand out so quickly. You know what I mean? Um, like the, what's the one that got us going viral now? Steve Lacey. You know what I mean? If you listen to his music, is I don't know if you ever heard Steve Lacey, but I don't know yet. Okay. Yeah, you listen. It's, it's it's such a different vibe, and so the ones who are are, are daring to be different and, and can use social media correctly. Because I see it's a question in the comments right now: Can you be a star without using social media? Um, not really, because <clears throat> you you that's that's where you get discovered at. And so the ones who are different enough and know how to use social media, they rise to the top because people are discovering them like that. Like, wow, you don't sound like everybody else. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that's a big thing. 